Good morning. This is Ed Ray, pastor of University Assembly in Columbus, Georgia. I'd like to welcome you to our online service this morning. I'd also like to invite you to visit with us for our live services. We meet each Sunday at 10 o'clock for Sunday school, followed by our worship service at 11 o'clock. We also meet on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock for a time of prayer and a time of Bible study. Man, as a child, I can remember the greatest uh, Christmas gift that I ever received. And me and my brother both received matching mini bikes. I mean, they were uh, metallic blue in color. They had these orange fluorescent stripes on them. Man, they were really cool. And uh, my grandparents had some uh, land back behind their property, and we used to like to go back there riding. And there were some little jumps that we would uh, get a little air on and had a good time until one day we were riding and I was following my brother and he went across one of the jumps and uh, as soon as he hit the ground he slammed on his brakes because there were some people coming from the other direction and I didn't see him and I hit that uh, ramp and I was a good bit lighter than him so it carried me further and I just crashed into him and wound up putting him in the hospital. But I want to remind us this morning of the greatest gift of all uh, that we can receive today and that is the gift that came in the form of a baby in a manger uh, our lord and savior jesus christ he is a gift from heaven a gift from the father his name is jesus uh, he is called emmanuel which means god with us god in his mercy and love came from heaven and dwelt among us that we might have salvation. Father God, I just thank you for this day, Lord, and I pray that you'll just bless your word and that we'll hear what you have to say for us during this Christmas season, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text today comes from the book of Isaiah, and it's chapter 9 and verse 6, and it says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Man, there's nothing more beautiful than seeing a newborn baby, except maybe uh, the birth of your newborn grandbaby. And we always said that if we would have known they were going to be so much fun, we would have had them first. But the most wonderful days of my life that I can remember are the days that I witnessed my children being brought into this world. It's kind of like my uh, father-in-law always used to say. He'd say, you know, I love my children. He said, I wouldn't take a million dollars for ne'er one of them. And he said, I wouldn't give you a dollar for another one just like them. So he was quite funny. But uh, there's nothing more precious than a young couple holding their newborn baby, looking at all of his facial features or her facial features and trying to decide who the child most resembles, or a mother looking into her child's face wondering what he or she will grow up to be one day. It kind of reminds me of the story one day a teacher asked her students, what do you want to be when you grow up? And little Johnny threw his hand up and she didn't want to call on him. And so she called on little Susie and said, Susie, what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor. She said, well, that's wonderful, Susie. Anybody else? And little Johnny threw his hand up, and she didn't want to call on Johnny. And she said, Billy, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to grow up to be a fireman. She said, well, that's just wonderful. wonderful. She couldn't ignore Johnny anymore. So finally she asked Johnny, Johnny, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, just like my dad. She said, wow, I didn't know that your dad was the CEO of a company like that. He said, well, he's not, but he also wants to be one. Luke 2.19 says, Mary treasured up all these things in her heart. I believe she went through all the emotions of a new mother, wondering what her son would be when he grew up. The Bible says in Isaiah 9.6 that unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. You see, God gave his very best, his one and only son, and it says in Galatians 4, 4, it says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman. In Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin 
shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. In Philippians 2, it says, Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself uh, nothing of no repute by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. He's God's only Son, God's one and only Son. God gave His Son to you and me. Uh, it's the greatest Christmas gift that we could ever possibly receive. But He wasn't born to be placed under a tree, but rather He was born to be nailed to a tree for our sins so that we could receive forgiveness for our sins. But it is the way that He came into the world was as a babe. The most quoted scripture in the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You see, Jesus came to die for our sins and salvation through him is a free gift. We can't earn it. We can't purchase it. We don't deserve it. But in God's grace and in his mercy, all we have to do is believe and receive this, this free gift that he has given us. The Bible says that the government will be upon his shoulders. And I believe this is primarily referring to the rule and reign of Christ and what we call the, the second coming or the, the millennial reign of Christ when he will return as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But I believe that in our lives that he also wants to rule and reign in our lives and set up his kingdom within us. The Bible says, Revelation 11:15. 15, it says, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. See, we are called to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness while we are passing through this life. And to allow him to rule and reign in our hearts, he's to be our Lord, he's to be our Savior, he's to be our King, and we are to be his loyal subjects and to serve him. Luke 17 says, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Neither shall they say, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Has God set up his kingdom in your life today? Have you received him as your Lord and as your king? And it says that the government would be on his shoulders. And the Hebrew word uh, Shechem is translated shoulder, and it means the neck area between the shoulders where the burdens were placed. And I want to just uh, encourage you today that Jesus carries our burdens. He carries the weight of our sin upon his shoulders. He carries the weight of the world upon his shoulders. He is truly the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he will one day rule and reign from the new Jerusalem. But today he can rule in the hearts of men and women and children around the world. There's five things that the Bible uh, five names that the Bible gives Jesus here, five titles, and I want to go through these this morning. It says that he is wonderful. He is wonderful, and I want to ask you this morning, has God been wonderful to you? God is wonderful. He is full of wonder. He is the creator of all things. All you got to do is look around at our creation and see the wonderful wonders of God. Look at, look at a newborn babe and just see the beauty of God's creation today. Psalm 8, 3 and 8 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Here we have our wonderful creator who's created all the stars and the moon and the planets and all these things, and yet he is mindful of you and I. God cares for you and I. He says, Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. See, Jesus was in the very beginning with the Father. He participated in the creation of the world. And what a beautiful creation it is. The Bible says that he is also a counselor. In some translations, there's a, uh, a comma between wonderful and counselor. and some, there's not. So you could say he's, he is wonderful counselor, or you could say he's a wonderful counselor. And you'd be correct in either one that you say. Not only is Jesus wonderful, but he is a wonderful counselor. He counsels us or he teaches us about the Father. He guides us in the steps that we are to take. He gives us direction. He leads us 
as we go through this life because his ways are higher than our ways. He imparts wisdom and he imparts knowledge unto us and uh, to those that seek him. He teaches us the deep things of God. He counsels us about what life is all about. He teaches us how to live, how to love, how to love God and how to love our fellow man. Uh, he is a wonderful counselor, counselor and that's, you know, he can help us with life's most complex questions. And I wanna ask you today, have you ever had to go see a counselor? Have you ever had to uh, uh, maybe go see a, a, a counselor or a therapist or a, a psychologist, psychiatrist? And I just wanna share with you this morning at 21 years of age, I found myself going through the darkest time of my life. And for the first time in my life, I experienced depression which I had never experienced as a child because I had a wonderful childhood. But at 21 years old, I found myself in this place and I needed some counseling. I needed somebody to help me through that time. And I was able to uh, go in and visit with one of my pastors and one of my best friends, uh, Watson McKimmy, who just uh, helped me and he guided me through that area of my life and brought me out of that dark place and back into God's wonderful light. And I'm just thankful that uh, he was there for me. And so we have a God who is a wonderful counselor. Jesus is a wonderful counselor. And if you need some help today, call on him. And I'm not telling you not to call on counselors or not to call on therapists, but call on God and he will lead you and he will direct you in those areas of your life. And when we find ourselves in uh, troubled times, he will always see us through. And, you know, I'm going through a, a bit of a, a testing right now some things going on in my life but i know that i can trust in god to help me through this james 1 5 and 8 says if any of you lacks wisdom you should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord such a person is a double-minded and unstable in all they do. So when we ask God to help us, we must trust that he will believe in him, put our faith in him. Proverbs 3, 5 and 12 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your uh, barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. So just in those few short verses there, God counsels us in the airy Areas of trust, submission, health, finances, and discipline. He is a wonderful counselor, and he will help you in whatever you may be going through today. Jesus always taught or counseled those around him. He did it through parables. He did it through the compassionate acts that he showed toward people. And he also did it through the miracles that he performed. He's also called a mighty God. And he is a mighty God because in Genesis 1-1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And John 1-1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was with the Father in the very beginning at creation. And his creation is wonderful. And it took a mighty God, obviously, to create this complex world that we live in today. Jeremiah 10-12 says, It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. Man, you ever just lay on your back in a field and just look up at the sky and look up at the clouds or look at the stars at night and you just are just amazed and at all of God's creation. He is a mighty God. Jesus told us in Matthew that with God, all things are possible. The very God that created the heavens and the earth also is mindful of you today and is at work in our lives and with him all things are possible we can't see our way out of things we have a mighty god 
with whom all things are possible. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is among you, and he is mighty to save. God will rescue you. He will save you from your troubles today. Jeremiah 10.12 says, It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. And in Jeremiah 32 it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? We serve a mighty God, and there's nothing too hard for him today. This verse also said that he is the everlasting Father. It says in Psalm 90 and 2, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You see, God never changes. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God will not walk out on you. The Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is an everlasting father. You see, people will walk out on you. People will abandon you. People will reject you. People will neglect you. But our heavenly father is an everlasting father. And he'll never walk out on you. He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you. It says in Psalms 45, 6, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And in Isaiah 40, 28, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And I just want to say today, there may be some of you out there that have been abandoned or neglected, you know, maybe by your earthly fathers. You didn't have a proper father uh, raising you to, uh, to advise you, to guide you, to lead you. But you have a heavenly father today, and he will never leave you or forsake you. And he will lead you and guide you and be by your side every step of the way. He's also called the Prince of Peace. And in uh, John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He's telling us, don't be afraid, don't be troubled. I am with you. I'm going to give you peace. The world can't give you peace. There's not a drug in this world that will bring lasting peace into your life. There's not a drink in this world that will bring lasting peace into your life. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And if you go to Him, He will bring you peace in the midst of your storm. And I mentioned I'm going through this uh, cancer thing in my life right now. And I've just been consumed by the peace of God. I'm not consumed with worry. I'm doing the things that I have to do to work through this, but I'm not worried. I'm not afraid of my future because I know who holds my future in his hands. He is the Prince of Peace and he has imparted that peace unto me and he will impart that peace unto you as well today. Jesus said in John 16, he says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He's telling us out in this world, you're going to have troubles, you're going to have tribulations, but in him, you can have peace. He says, take heart, I've overcome the world, and because I overcame the world, you can over the, overcome the world as well. Isaiah 26 and 3, it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see, we've got our part to play in this, and our part is to keep our mind on the Lord. If you keep your mind on your troubles, you're going to lose any peace that you might have, and that's what the enemy wants. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your peace from you and destroy your life. And uh, But we have a God who wants us to have peace in the midst of our storms, but we have to keep our minds on Him, and we have to keep our trust in Him. We can't trust in the things of this world only in Christ. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto God, and the peace of God sur which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding. There's nothing in this world that offers it, only the Prince of Peace. So I want to conclude today by saying, unto us a child is born. To us a son has been given. He is wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's the everlasting father. 
and he is the Prince of Peace. And I want to ask you today, do you know him? Do you know him as your Lord and your Savior today? Do you know this Prince of Peace? Do you know this everlasting Father who will never neglect you or leave you or forsake you? Do you know this mighty God who created all things, yet he's mindful of you today? Do you know this wonderful Counselor that will advise you and lead you and guide you through your life today? Would you come to know him? Let's pray. Father God, I just pray for everyone that's watching today and listening, Father, if they've never made that decision to accept Jesus into their lives, Lord, I pray, God, they'll make that decision today, Lord. You sent your son in the form of a child, the greatest gift that we could ever experience, Lord, and I pray, God, that that gift will be imparted to those that are listening today, that they would receive that free gift of salvation that was made possible by Jesus Christ who came and lived among us and who went to the cross and gave his life for us. So if you want to receive him today, just repeat after me. Father, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I need Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to wash me clean and to give me new life, to give me hope and to give me eternal life. And I want to put my faith in him today and him alone. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Well, I pray that you just received the greatest gift of all and that you receive into your life this mighty God, this wonderful counselor, this everlasting father, this prince of peace. In Jesus' name, amen.